Being an actor isn't all about glamour and glory. There's a lot of long, demanding hours of repetitive shooting, all those press questions, and the constant invasion of your personal life. Therefore, it's actually quite common for those in the public eye to indulge in some adult substances every once in a while in their private time. Drug use on movie sets was much more of a thing in the 70s and 80s, but that doesn't mean it's entirely disappeared from the process. Sometimes it doesn't affect the on-screen results much, but at other times, it's hard to tell if the actors were supposed to be acting high or if it was just kind of worked into the scene at last minute. With this in mind, I'm Jules WhatCulture.com, and these are eight actors who got high to shoot their movies. But before we begin, don't forget to subscribe to stay notified. Ding, ding, done. Number eight, Wesley Snipes' Blade Trinity. According to multiple reports from the cast and crew, Wesley Snipes was an unpleasant co-worker during the third and final installment of the Blade franchise. Most of this can be attributed to his poor temper, but one can't help but wonder if it wasn't because he'd much rather have been in his trailer smoking the pots than actually filming. Patton Oswalt, who had a small role in Blade Trinity, often described Snipes' behaviour on set as beyond eccentric, recounting how he insisted on being called Blade in and out of costume and communicated almost entirely in post-it notes. Also, he would refuse to come out of his trailer for long periods of time, preferring to smoke weed all day and shouting about how much he hated Ryan Reynolds. This happened so frequently that the director had to use stand-ins for way more scenes than they wanted to. Insert cheap joke here about how Blade should have been called blunt and slash or blazed. Number 7. Seth Rogen – Zack and Miri make a porno Seth Rogen is, without a doubt, one of the most prolific open weed users currently working in Hollywood. His resume would be impressive for even somebody who didn't spend the majority of their time toking up, but Rogen is remarkably able to work harder than most of his peers while constantly being high. While filming Zack and Miri make a porno, Rogen passed along his stoner workaholism to the director, Kevin Smith, who before Rogen came along had only air quotes, gotten high a handful of times. Smith praised Rogen in interviews for being the most high-functioning stoner he'd ever met. He was never late for work, always had brilliant ideas, and was always writing and being generally productive. So the next time people tell you that stoners are lazy, show them this. Or don't. Oh, I don't really care. Convincing people is hard. I'm, I'm so tired. Number 6. The Beatles. Help! After Bob Dylan famously introduced the Fab Four to cannabis, it was tough to pull any of them away from it for very long. That explains why the Beatles' second feature film, Help, was essentially shot in a haze of marijuana smoke. It was the first public display that proved that they were no longer those clean-cut boys everybody knew. All four of them spent the bulk of production in a foggy cloud of weed, but it was Paul and Ringo who seemed to have the most fun with it. Ringo once recounted that after a bit where he and Paul were supposed to go running over a hill to end the scene, they simply kept on running so they could sneak off and share a joint before the next take. Paul said that they had to reshoot a lot of scenes because they would have tears streaming down their faces from trying to hold their laughter. And there was a lot of giggling happening on set, which Paul admitted wasn't very professional. But then again, none of them really cared at the time. Number 5. Ethan Embry – Can't Hardly Wait Can't Hardly Wait was a teen comedy that takes place at a high school graduation party and features a giant cast of soon-to-be-famous actors, including Jennifer Love Hewitt, Seth Green, and Ethan Embry. Most of them probably don't remember much about the forgettable comedy nowadays, but at least one of them owes that to the copious amounts of weed he was smoking at the time. That's Embry, who played the hopeless romantic Preston Myers. When asked to recount any notable happenings from his time spent making the movie, Embry called himself the world's biggest stoner, uh, but couldn't really come up with anything else. Literally nothing. Apparently, before their big kissing scene at the end of the film, Jennifer Love Hewitt begged him to wash his mouth out and pop a couple of breath mints because he absolutely reeked of weed. Smooth. Number 4. Carrie Fisher – Empire Strikes Back The life of Princess Leia immediately following Star Wars A New Hope was one, ironically, of hopelessness. Carrie Fisher was so typecast as the space heroine that she was unable to get much work elsewhere, and she took solace in drugs. During the filming of Empire Strikes Back, Fisher was knee-deep in her cocaine addiction. She routinely got high on set, particularly before any scene that found her on the ice planet of Hoth, for whatever reason. Maybe the coke helped her stay warm on this fictitious planet? Fisher had this to say, that she didn't even like coke that much, it was just a case of getting on whatever train I needed to, to get high. Which is super depressing considering that she was taking part in what is arguably the greatest installment in one of the most beloved franchises ever made. Number 3. Dan Aykroyd – Blues Brothers It should be common knowledge by now that John Belushi was super high during the filming of pretty much anything he ever did, and while being a fantastic comedian, it's a bit of a cautionary tale of drug excess. Take, for example, his role as Jake Blues in The Blues Brothers, one of my favourite comedies of all time for the record, 
which came at a time when he was regularly sinus deep in cocaine. But perhaps a little more surprising, his on-screen brother Elwood was just as high. Aykroyd readily admits that he was using cocaine pretty heavily when filming the Blues Brothers, but that he never considered the amount he was snorting to be in excess. He says he never purchased it for personal use and only partook on set. Aykroyd also told Vanity Fair that the budget for the cult classic included money in the budget for cocaine that was set aside to help them get through their long nights of shooting. I mean, we don't even get a beer tab here when we do the wrestling streams. Number 2. Dennis Quaid – The Big Easy Dennis Quaid seems like the kind of clean-cut everyman who probably sits at home on Sundays watching the NFL with a beer in his hand. But apparently, the elder Quaid had an affinity for cocaine back on the set of The Big Easy, where he was busy trying to become the spiritual brethren with John Belushi. He even has a similar story to Dan Aykroyd recounting how the drug was disguised in the movie's budget. He's quite open about his use, saying that he'd get an hour of sleep at night, wake up, snort a line, and swear he wasn't going to do it again that day, but by the time the 4 o'clock rolled round, he'd be right back on it. He also admits it affected his acting, which actually won't come as a surprise to anyone who's heard his attempt at a Cajun accent in that movie. Yeah, I guess we're just gonna take the check tonight, Paul. And number one, Jack Nicholson, Easy Rider. Easy Rider wasn't just a movie that helped explain the drug culture of the 60s, it also helped finance the drug culture of the 60s, what with the cast and crew lighting up constantly on the set. During the filming of the infamous Campfire Freakout scene, Jack Nicholson estimated that they'd all smoked north of 150 joints, just for that one scene. In an interview in Playboy magazine that I swear I was just looking at to read that interview, Nicholson recalled how each time he performed another take or the director wanted to shoot from another angle, that would invariably lead to the actor smoking another joint, rolled with air quotes, pretty good Mexican grass. And yet, according to Peter Fonda, Nicholson remained a consummate pro and never forgot his lines or broke character. Though Nicholson stayed true to the script even while riding a ridiculous high, he says the perpetual puffing helped him reimagine his character, coming up with different mannerisms and new ways of saying the lines. Now, the point of the campfire scene is to introduce Jack's character to marijuana, and it had to show Nicholson slowly becoming stoned, but since he was already lit after the first couple of takes, the acting job became kind of reversed, and Nicholson would have had to act like he wasn't stoned at the beginning of the scene. Isn't that weird? Hey guys, before you go, I just wanted to talk to you about a brand new project that we're going to have starting up pretty soon. It's a brand new channel called That Film Theory, the pace of which is going to be a bit more relaxed and focus on kind of video essays on our favourite cinematic experiences. If that sounds like something that you're interested in, then click the screen and go over there. Hopefully we'll see you soon. We're passionate about it, so come support us.